good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome to the panel robotics rise of the robots robotics industry as we all know has received the much needed push post pandemic uh, the no contact policy has ushered in an era of automation some of the heartening scenes that we witnessed were robots serving covid 19 patients in high risk wards similarly businesses of all sizes have been deploying automation to ensure business continuity however now we are 2 years into the pandemic people are again craving normalcy so has this trend has any impact at all on the robotics industry to find out that and more we are honored to have with us today mr jay krishnan tree the ieee member and ceo of simo robotics and mr kiran raju the ceo of green robotics kiran and jay krishnan thank you so much for being here with us today it's a pleasure to have you on board Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Jay Krishnan, I'll come to you first. Like I mentioned before, there was a huge hype around robotics when the pandemic began. So, has the hype sustained even now? What has changed for the robotics industry two years into the pandemic? Yes, there has been a hype indeed, and uh, I would say the best analogy is uh, comparing it with uh, deep space missions. you might have heard about rockets uh, you know when when they are launched there will be boosters booster rockets fired to uh, have an additional thrust to overcome uh, the earth uh, back, i mean uh, gravitational pull so just like that a pandemic was uh, a booster uh, fired uh, so that uh, this time the resistance was like you know robotics if you look at a couple of years back particularly in this geography been seen as a, a threat to employment so the acceptance was a problem the acceptance of the public adaptation was a problem now that resistance has gone up taken away by this pandemic the people started seeing robots as their companion or part of their day to day life so just like uh, the the in the case of uh, rockets uh, once if it is escaped from the earth magnetic traction i mean the gravitational pull then uh, the effect is still there so the effect is still there the acceptance is already there so now uh, the the most um, the the demand the vertical which was uh, uh, receiving the the most the best advantage is of course healthcare and i doubt healthcare is still uh, vertical it, it has already become a horizontal like you know because uh, the your your health is not your health today your health is your society's health so everyone has to follow the new normal you are wearing mask not only for you but also to for the protection of others so the systems that uh, the robotic solution that that uh, come up with addressing these kind of problems like uh, uh, it can be uh, you know creating awareness or maybe uh, for uh, the contactless dispensing and then uh, the the behavior tracking uh, you know uh, like whether people are following the new normal properly and then the sanit sanitization disinfection uh, for uh, large areas health screening uh, and even uh, you know uh, what is it like even for uh, minimizing the human presence in surgery in many areas uh, there are solutions now and it is widely accepted so Uh, i can also say that the growth uh, was actually stagnant by 2018 and that has been um, uh, significantly improved uh, post pandemic now uh, 2020 i would say it was uh, 10% of for the overall growth uh, for the robotics market and now uh, 2021 it is 13% so uh, th that effect is still there it persists thank you so much jay krishnan for uh, you know telling that to us uh, so kiran i'll come to you you mentioned that you know uh, you are more into software uh, you know you, you you'd like to develop platform for companies so how has the pandemic impacted the adoption of robotics in industry 4.0 how has the perception around that changed sure sabri see i think uh, uh, if software itself is right is uh, change has taken a paradigm shift in the, in the last 2 uh, 3 years i would say thanks to the way processing power has increased right um and the pinnacle of software is what we call ai right 
I mean, really, if you look at artificial intelligence, it's the pinnacle of software, right? If if software is so smart that it can write itself, it can learn itself, it can do everything, then it's 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 almost uh, AI. And there's the hard part of it, which where it where it's a where it's a machine that is computing it or or taking actions on it, right? So a lot of our uh, core uh, expertise is in making sure that we bring in a robot that will help people at some point, right? Um, and I think the pandemic has changed that core uh, principle, accelerated by seven years, seven to eight years, I would say, right? So what was supposed to happen eight years from now is suddenly happening now because of, uh, because of the pandemic, right? So for example, Zoom call, I'll give you a very interesting example, right? How Zoom call flew up, like, uh, you know, what it was, what, how it's supposed to grow in seven years, it grew in like the la in three months, right? So same thing happened here where they're saying suddenly because there's a lot of demigration of cities. So the workforce itself is changing. The workforce is repositioning, right? So people went back to their homes. People then are got used to that and they don't want to come back into the workforce, right? So, the, so one of the core challenges of any new technology like robotics is that it, it is going to impact the workforce. So we'll, we have to fight governments, we have to fight people perception. We have to fight. Um, we have to constantly fight people itself, right? So a situation like the pandemic automatically makes that change for organizations like us, so that you can cross that barrier and now say that see this is of value and it's actually helping the workforce rather than it is not taking your jobs. Your job is going to be repositioned so that you can work from home and work through the computer while the groundwork is being done by robots, right? So uh, I think, and airspace is something that we should watch for. I think the next two, three years, I think one thing the pandemic again accelerated is how do we cover long distances uh, with minimal flight patterns? And I think that's where a lot of our focus also goes into saying that how do we, um, how do we manage airspace? Um, and I think, again, the, the core principle is that distances have increased people are no more going to migrate to cities to get their job, right? So the whole demigration has just started. So you can see that in the next five, six years, the demigration is going to happen. People are going to work from Vijayawada and get paid Hyderabad salaries, right? So or people are going to work from third cities, fourth cities, and be able to still work um, as if they're working in, in, in a metropolitan city, right? So that is where I think uh, a lot of the uh, robots are filling, going to fill in those gaps uh, that people are not able to do. And so I think that's one area, but so many areas, right? So I'm not going to go into all of them. That's one. That was really interesting to know, uh, Kiran. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so, Jayakrishna, if I may come back to you, you've been focusing on the healthcare uh, industry for a while now. In healthcare, prefer, people prefer the human intervention. They prefer the human angle. You know, there's so much talk about robot docs, and you know, we see uh, robots performing surgeries. So can this ever come in a full-fledged manner in a country like India? Yes, I would say yes. Definitely it will come into full swing in India, so undoubtedly. Uh, see, uh, we are fortunate uh, enough to work with uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, who is uh, a renowned person in the medical uh, domain. And um, so he often says that, uh, you know, in the coming years, there won't be any uh, admission, uh, hospital admission for general diseases. Right? There will be only critical care or intensive care. Uh, so if I tell anything. So he foresee that the, the hospital will be full of ICUs. So even now his hospital, may, the major space is uh, allocated for uh, ICUs. So uh, let's try to understand this. See, the, if you look at the healthcare mechanism, it has major uh, three major aspects. One is like diagnosis and then, of course, treatment or surgery and then the post-treatment or post-surgical care. So uh, if you look at the diagnosis, you can see that now nowadays, uh, most of the vitals, like, you know, you can very easily uh, kind of, um, uh, you know, um, uh, monitor the vitals. Uh, just using wearables. There are very cost-effective wearables available and they send this information across uh, internet and then the doctor might be sitting uh, far away and then uh, he will be able to see that in real time and then prescribe some medicine. So that comes to treatment. So he prescribes medicine and they can locally purchase and use it. 
and any time uh, it, it's a well connected uh, you know what is it like uh, way of consultation and treatment so um, that is there and then also uh, when it comes to so knowingly or unknowing unknowingly i would say indians have accepted it uh, this telemedicine and they, they are it is being widely used so that, that is already in place and it is going to uh, be doubled or tripled or many folds in the coming years you can see that and we have a huge deficit of uh, uh, you know physicians and uh, experts in this area so i think this kind of multiplication uh, will definitely help and uh, also in certain cases where you need to take a collective decision you can have people from all over the world come together through a virtual platform and then they can share their ideas and then get something sorted out very quickly yes. in certain cases like you have to take quick decision what to do with this patient or uh, this uh, problem so that will be very helpful and coming to the the post uh, uh, treatment care or surgical care absolutely uh, you know uh, now also uh, we have been uh, successfully using a uh, uh, system like a, a scale down ambulance miniature um, ambulances moving through the corridor, taking the microbiology samples and then uh, other uh, you know, medicines back and forth between department in Narayana Hridayalaya. So that is uh, one thing that, that is actually to minimize the human uh, presence because they are highly prone to diseases. And also uh, the post-surgical care, even then, uh, uh, the, you know, the um, re rehabilitation therapy and then, uh, you know, even if you are at home, uh, you, if you are old aged and if you are suffering from dementia and any other kind of problems, uh, then uh, it's a very interesting concept uh, now started happening in uh, countries like uh, um, Japan and other areas where the, the, we have the demographics issues, uh, robots helping, uh, engaging them, helping them to do, uh, to, uh, to um, you know, what is it like uh, for their day to day routine. And uh, that is actually going to come in uh, our our uh, country also, but uh, maybe that that is something which which may take uh, uh, more time since uh, we have uh, cheap labor available here. And again, pandemic has a role here because we we are, we are always trying to minimize the human involvement. So I think uh, in the coming uh, five to uh, uh, seven years, uh, in all these areas, three areas, we are going to see a. Uh, big difference uh, acceptance and uh, usage in Indian market. Only one thing uh, that uh, we need to have the, the network capabilities like 5G to get established so that, and also you mentioned about uh, uh, surgery. Surgery, in fact, if you look at most of the uh, hospitals, uh, uh, top hospitals in India has this uh, surgical robot available. So that, even if you look at that uh, right now itself, uh, it is not a direct um, uh, surgery uh, being performed uh, with the help of that machine. The doctor is, even though he's sitting few yards away, it is just human in the loop. It is a real time control. He is actually experiencing the force feedback, everything. So uh, that area is also already, it, it is not completely connected. A doctor is actually not directly performing this. He is sitting, uh, he is doing it with, with the help of uh, uh, this, um, uh, you know, pili operation. So that uh, is just a matter of having a better network like 5G so that you can sit anywhere in the world and do the same thing. Yeah, you're right there, uh, sir, on the, you know, uh, robots helping the already strained uh, healthcare system. It would be really great if it could actually happen. Uh, so, Kiran, while we are on the topic of human angle, I'll come to you. Uh, your company helps uh, enterprises of all sizes with hyper automation. So there is this kind of fear that automation, uh, you know, like uh, Jay Krishna said before, automation will replace human jobs. So is this fear justified? Yes. I would say yes. I think, I would say there are a lot of, uh, hence the repositioning, right? So I think um, if you take the industrial age uh, to, um, from when you move from, uh, let's say, mining to factories, right? There's a whole change in how uh, the workforce adapted to it, right? So I think this is a point uh, in where adaption is required, right? Um, and I think uh, all the governments understand it. All the all the companies that are doing it understand it. So so we they, so and I think it is going to come over a generation, right? It's not something that is. 
going to come in in, in the next two years, right? It's going to come in the next fifteen years, right? So uh, twenty years, right? So 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 there will be a generational gap, and if you look at what's happening in education today, that and everybody is assumed to be working in front of a computer beyond the next generation. So that that shift will happen. Um, there will be early adopter cases. Um, and and, and 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 the reason why robots are so important is because some of them deliver beyond human capability right for example uh, and then that's one of the core um, mantras that we use at robotics saying that whenever we build a robot if it is only beyond human capability that we will release it right a uh, simple thing like indra jal right if 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 the foreign force is sending a, um, a threat which is Powered by AI, we have to only respond. Only AI can fight AI. There's no human that is that can really fight it, right? Because it's just too smart. It learns too quickly, and it moves too too fast for for human reaction to actually do something about it, right? Uh, and these are we're talking about in milliseconds to seconds calculations, right? So it's there are a lot. The first areas will be those areas where there's a lot of beyond human capability, whether it's healthcare, wherever, where where humans are just not capable of traveling to 10 different locations at the same time right so so that's the area where it'll impact first um, and then slowly it will spread uh, over, over the next 20 years i would say yes it will impact for sure <laughs> i mean how can it not yeah that was pretty honest uh, kiran thank you so much for that i don't think i've heard anybody say it this honestly but it's good it's needed uh, so Jay Krishnan, uh, you know, while we're on the topic, maybe you can tell us, you know, of course, I mean, Kiran has made it clear that humans and robots will have to work together. It will have to be a collaboration moving forward. So what are the challenges uh, that, you know, come uh, forth when humans and uh, robots collaborate with each other? Well, before getting into that, I would actually like to add on something what, uh, on what Kiran said about uh, this uh, last question. Sure, so sure. Yeah, see, uh, you know, one thing is very clear that, you know, even in India, if you look at, uh, there are small pockets or there are, uh, there are actually a shortage of resources. If you look at, uh, one is I, I can cite, uh, it, it's a security job. So everyone who are working there is more than 50 years old. They are retired people. Like there are a lot of areas, blue collar jobs, wherein we don't get resources. Just like water. Water is everywhere, but for drinking, we need to buy a bottle. So, uh, so just like that, uh, we certain areas where where robots can uh, supplement human. Uh, so, to start with uh, blue collar jobs, and obviously, if you look at the kind of growth, the demand that that uh, persists now uh, in urban areas, it's not it's not evenly distributed across the country. Like you know, in, in metros, if you look at uh, the the need of uh, real estate the buildings and other facilities is uh, is skyrocketing so because of the dense population so wherein in case of food also we are using biotechnology effectively using various signs uh, you know which is working behind that uh, to address the needs so likewise um, uh, robotics also is going to help uh, where the demand is in multiple uh, um, where, where it is scaled up so, uh, so that's where actually we can use same time. Uh, it doesn't remain as a threat for jobs. Actually, complementing or it's actually supplementing uh, this requirement. So then, coming to your question, yes, uh, today's uh, uh, you know now that robot has come out of factories and they they start becoming part of our life. So one um, most important thing is like uh, in factories, in, in, uh, if you talk about the industrial robotics, good old industrial robotics, they are uh, working in a very structured environment. There is no dynamics. Everything is just a repetition of the previous thing. So uh, now uh, robots are not only doing that mundane or repetitive jobs because the demand is actually uh, fluctuating. Even in factory, we, we typically call it, call it, call it as flexible manufacturing so where cobots are used so, and also alongside with you for uh, supporting your day-to-day -day life uh, two things are important one is like uh, to continuously grab the information uh, um, of uh, the environment through sensors uh, it's not single sensor it's an array of sensors collecting information um, I would say that it is. It can be vision, it can be hearing, and uh, it, it can be 
tactile sensing, it can be joint encoders. Uh, I would say uh, proprioceptive um, uh, this um, sensing uh, is needed. Like uh, you know, when you are blindfolded, you know where exactly uh, your arms are. You are, uh, you know, um, where where are you in, in that three D space exactly? So that's how uh, people understand their posture. So that that kind of thing is also applicable for robotics. So when when you have uh, uh, this vision and uh, vision is the most important sensing mechanism uh, which is there. So you, you won't be using it much. But for a robot, uh, you uh, when when it is used in unstructured environment, it should I should understand. Uh, the the its self um, you know position and posture and the self localization is needed. So you you need, you need to use these sensors and then you have to process it and then you need the sufficient level of dexterity to do the job. Then only you can uh, selectively go for the best option to do that. That we daily practice in our daily life. Like you know when you try to carry a bucket full of water, you always try to lower the center of gravity. It's done unknowingly. So for a robot, everything has to be taught. And then when the robot and human interacts, obviously it has to have properties like a back drivability, where you exchange force with the robot. So the robot will not damage, you will not get hurt. So it is typically called back, back drivability. That has to be there. And also anti-gravity. This is very successfully used in collaborative systems. Anti-gravity is like it's a self-weight compensation. When you do something you're all, uh, with your arm, you're unknowingly compensating the self-weight of the arm. So that is how uh, these are things which has to be brought to uh, the robot uh, and also uh, AI uh, to, to perform this uh, meaningfully. Uh, then I think uh, that is how this human-robot collaboration happens technically. Yeah, that was really insightful, uh, Jay Krishnan. Thank you. Uh, so, Kiran, now I'll come to you. Uh, you know, you are an innovator yourself. There is so much talk about making uh, deep tech a global, you know, India a deep tech hub and, you know, bringing it on par with other geographies. So, what more is needed from innovators like you and Jay Krishnan to bring India on par with other local, you know, other uh, countries when uh, robotics is concerned? So, uh, see, I think uh, the way we look at it is that. I mean, if you look at history, right? Um, we always leapfrog, right? Um, and I think the the new generation of robots, um, uh, for example, a land moving robot has limitations in today's infrastructure, right? Its limitation is today's infrastructure. Let's say something, let's say uh, the Tesla has the latest uh, self-driving car. It's a robot, right? It's, that's, I mean, maybe not the robot that we imagine with hands and legs, but it is it's a self-driving car. So that means it, it, it's a machine that is moving by itself, right? But the infrastructure in India will not support it for a long time, right? There are certain infrastructure assumptions that are required for a lot of these to uh, really work in a, in a main scale environment. Um, the one space that is not structured like that and nothing has been built is, again, like I say, is the airspace. Right. However, that's where I think you will have to imagine that every robot will be able to fly. Right. It's a drone that can do 10 things, right? whether deliver pizza, do this, do that, right? Come clean your, I don't know, do your, you know, gardening or spray your every day come and spray your garden, right? Um, or secure your house, right? Because the airspace is not structured, right? So that is where I think. Um, India is going to take a, a leapfrog forward, right? Um, in, 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 and I think the policy also, if you look at the last two months of policy changes, um, we, we, we can see that uh, DGCA is taking a step towards, um, uh, I don't know, maybe from the government or you know, whoever is pushing it, but I can see the push happening, right? So, so I think that's where we will be able to not just compete, but leapfrog past maybe other countries because in, in, in I'm telling you in land robotics, in uh, methods of motion, in, 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 in those areas, in, in automation, um, it's a cost dynamic, right? And when end of the day, India for us to beat cost dynamic, we have a lot of people, right? So there are two reasons why the robot can ever come into a place, but it has to be faster, cheaper or better, right? So 
I think the cost dynamic of something being cheaper is is it will not be achieved in India for for a while, right? Um, but however, the second we start tackling the airspace, uh, uh, then, then then the viability of that becomes because imagine in airspace, every one um, drone you need one pilot. But the second there is no pilot required, you are growing exponentially, right? So same thing with I think ground robotics. You don't need every operation. You need one doctor, right? The second the doctor is not required, it'll grow exponentially, right? So I think that crossover point, some industries will have a, a much larger impact. And in, for India, there are certain industries, um, and defense being a primary one, right? Because uh, and I, I think healthcare, healthcare is a great industry because it is needed. Um, uh, because there, there, there are less doctors, less pilots, less all these guys, and that's where robotics really will will, will impact. Because if a machine can uh, read your X-ray and tell you what's what's wrong with you, right? Uh, you know, and and you know, then then you have crossed that barrier, right? So I think India is going to leapfrog in in those areas where again, like I said, beyond human capability. Right? I think that's the areas where they'll you leapfrog. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. You made really interesting uh, points that I don't think I've ever heard before. Uh, so before we close this session, is are there any final comments that both of you would like to make, Jay Krishnan? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, actually, I was uh, listening to uh, Mr. Kiran. Uh, so there, there, of course, there is a, a inflection or crossover point which is going to happen in future uh, globally as far as robotics uh, versus human capabilities concerned. So uh, it can be seen like this. So the, the data, uh, the, the knowledge, and then, then the skill, and then the creative aspects. Uh, so if you look at the, the knowledge, it is definitely coming from data. And the skill, skill of course, it, it, it can come along with, uh, if, it, if you take the case of surgery, it can be precision, and it can be a kind of a, um, experience. So uh, it takes a long time to get, get trained. So uh, robotics can definitely help as AI can help the, the knowledge aspect, the skill aspect can be helped with, uh, through robotics, uh, AI enabled robotics. And then the creativity is what is left out for human beings to do. So as an, uh, when the robots are getting more and more uh, uh, engaged, uh, I mean, by addressing uh, various uh, problems, Humans should start getting into more creative aspects. Uh, so I think uh, that is what uh, we need a lot of uh, reskilling and upskilling of our resources. So we have to come out of the four folds of our mental block uh, to do this. And obviously, uh, the, the lot of policy changes required, which is happening. I'm very happy to see that uh, central government is enabling it and then even in case of if you look at the medical robotic space uh, i think kiran has mentioned it uh, like some policy change was there uh, last six months eight months back uh, to, to perform surgeries we don't have to 100 percent comply with the fda approvals so those were i think there are very very encouraging decisions taken by the government so i think that the future is definitely uh, like if you focus on uh, this uh, area uh, the problem of uh, you know uh, uh, shortage, shortage of resources or maybe the, the the what is happening in China we can replace with the help of automation and the rest of thing we already we we are one of the best countries I think in, in terms of software and uh, software development and intelligence I think we are there so this is a very 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 good opportunity for us. Yeah, can, would you like to say something? Yeah. I agree uh, with you. Jay. I, I think there's no confusion there. Um, I think uh, one point about skill development is key, and as we go along, uh, we'll see that uh, machines will learn faster, right? But I would like to end with saying that still there's nothing to worry about because end of the day, what are who are all the machines serving? If you are not serving another human being, you're really almost obsolete, right? So end of the day whatever is being developed is going to be tuned towards um, collaborating with a human being or serving a human being or something else, right? So end of the day, it's like the day we got a smartphone, we stopped remembering numbers, but nobody cares, right? 
Could you all remember numbers, right? So that's the shift that we have to understand is going to happen. The day robots take this, we will have other things to do, right? Like creative work or something else, right? It's there is enough, right? There is enough, right? There's no dearth of things to do as 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 you know maybe even save the planet somewhere. So, but but there's dearth of things to do. But just because we stop stop remembering phone number, I still know some people may in my own family like who still like to remember numbers. I'm like. Mm, not really right because it's just a habit but you have to i think that that shift is what we will be seeing yeah yeah thank you so much uh, gentlemen this was indeed a very insightful session so the learning that we get from here is of course there's a rise of robots but it will be through skilled innovators so maybe the way forward is the rise of robots through skilled innovators in the country yeah thank mm -hmm. you so much thank you so much uh, jaykishan yeah. and kiran Coming you. and you know talking. Catch up offline.